Get your Bibles in your hands this morning. Lift your Bible towards heaven. Let's have our confession today. Say, Father, Father in, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, I believe, I believe. This, is this is your word. Speak it to me. And I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Thank God for the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the Word of God. For the Bible is God's Word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God's Word speaking to you. Smile real big because you look better that way. All right, wave your word around. Hug somebody before you're seated. Praise God. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles. If you have an Amplified Bible, you can turn there. If you could uh, pull that up on the Amplified Bible for me this morning real quickly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll look at verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We're going to talk about the blood covenant this morning. And uh, it's picking right up on the subject of what we've been doing for several weeks is the walk of faith. The walk of faith. And uh, to get a better understanding of your walk of faith, you've got to understand the covenant. Understand in the covenant what God did in the covenant, which is the word of God. So let's read first of all here in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 in the Amplified Bible. For we walk by faith. We regulate, reg regulate our lives, conduct ourselves, our convictions, or belief respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. With trust, hope forever, thus, thus we walk not by sight or not by appearance. Say, so I walk by faith and not by appearance. I walk by faith and not by appearance. Now, what's going to help us in this is to understand our covenant with the Lord Jesus Christ. The covenant is a contract. It's a contract what Christ has done for us many 2,000 years ago. But it started back in the book of Genesis with Abraham. Praise God. Amen. Amen. For he walked by faith and not by sight. And strong faith, everybody say strong faith, strong faith. only comes when we get a revelation of the covenant of God's word. So let me start out this morning in Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. And let's read a few scriptures. Just stay with me this morning. And we're going to travel through the Word of God. And uh, it's going to take us a little while to get there. We won't get there this morning, but we'll be on our way there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? It's kind of like a long trip. Sometimes, you know, you're getting there, but it takes sometimes a couple of days to get there. So we're going to just uh, follow the Holy Spirit and believe God that the Holy Spirit in your mind is open uh, to receive the Word of God, which will change your life. Now, I've been, I've been praying for several weeks on this subject, meditating the whole time I was on vacation and, and studying and reading the Word of God on this subject. And so I said, Lord, I've got I to gotta break this down so it won't be complicated. When you start dealing with the Old Testament and understanding the difference between the Old and the New and what God has done, uh, we have to break it down and not let it get over our head sometimes. Because I know it gets over my head sometimes, and i got to back up and meditate and meditate on Scriptures and then meditate and meditate on it again. So you just don't get it the first time you hear it. You have to meditate on it, chew on it a little bit. And uh, this is what we're going to be doing, and I'm going to pray God will help me chew this up where I can feed you the revelation of God's covenant, his contract that he has for us. I'm telling you, church, man, I felt the Holy Ghost when I got into this thing. I said, 
because we've all walked in my faith, but we've all missed it. Sometimes faith don't seem like it's working, but faith is a spiritual law. It works every time. So if for faith works every time, but it's not working for me, there's something I'm missing. It's not God's fault. It's not on God's end. And so I'm beginning to examine my own life because I have been challenged, uh, just like many of you have been challenged over the past year or so. And so I just get God into this Word, begin to pray and seek God on where have I missed it at. And the thing that I've missed it at, I, I understand the covenant. I understand how it works, but I have not practiced it like I should have. What I mean by that is, is to meditate, meditate on the subject of the contract that God's made with me through the Lord Jesus Christ, started with Abraham. Now, Jason did a great job teaching on Melchizedek uh, for several lessons there. Amen. And so when you go back to that subject on Melchizedek, you'll find out he had not no father, no mother, but it was a type and shadow of Christ. Now, in the Word of God, in the New Testament, you find out sometimes when you read, it says Christ Jesus. In some places, you'll see it where it says Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus is his earthly name. Christ is his heavenly name. So when Melchizedek came, it was Christ in the form of Melchizedek because he's the one that God used for Abraham to pay tithes to. Amen? Amen. See, see, when you're paying your tithes, I, I don't mean to get into your subject on your lesson here, David, Jason. <laughs> but when you get into giving your tithes, you're giving to Christ. Amen. You're not giving to a church. You're giving to Christ. When we get a covenant revelation of that understanding, everything changes. Your wells will begin to open up. Things will begin to change in your body. Things will begin to change in your marriage. Things will begin to change on your job. And there's every time that we need a better understanding of the covenant of God, it's this day and time. Because we are living in crucial times. Amen. Crucial times. And this uh, coronavirus is bringing fear to people, which you don't, should not get into fear. I'm going to live in this life protected by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Lamb of God. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, and greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I'm not going to walk around with bar soap in my pocket. I believe in using wisdom. I believe in washing your hands, and you should wash your hands. Because a lot of people don't wash their hands. Amen. And those people's hands you shake, you need to wash your hands. <laughs> after you shake them. Amen. 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 But I'm not going to be in fear over it. Right. Because we cannot do everything perfect in the natural to keep our flesh perfect in the natural. Amen. And the only one that can help us with that is a revelation of our contract, our covenant with the word of the living God. The, word, the world can do what it wants to do, say what it wants to do, but thank God I'm in the world, but I am not of this world. Amen. The power of the Holy Ghost lives inside of me. And just because you are challenged or I am challenged does not void God's Word out of my life. Amen. It should make us stronger. Yeah. I'm getting stronger. Yeah. You're getting stronger. Yeah. Somebody said, I'm getting stronger. Yeah in the revelation of the covenant with Almighty God. Amen. Amen. So understanding the covenant helps us to walk by faith Amen. and not by appearance Amen. or by sight. But we have to get that revelation. Amen. Amen. So have you found Hebrews chapter 7 yet? Amen. I think we've given you enough time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. See, when you get a revelation of the covenant of God, uh, you won't let the clock keep you at home. 
Because if you use the clock for an excuse because you won't hear, there's another excuse you use next time. I don't have no excuses. Amen. 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 I'm serving God. Amen. We find out here in uh, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 22, by so much more Jesus has become a surety or a guarantee. The, the Greek here is called guarantee. He's a guarantee. We have a guarantee. You know, you go buy a car or a house, they give you certain guarantees. Or they are say sometimes when you go buy a car, limited warranty. <laughs> limited warranty. But with God, there's no limitations. I have a full lifetime guarantee from the word of Almighty God. Amen. If he tells me by his stripes I'm healed, I got a guarantee. Amen. A lifetime guarantee. Amen. I don't have to get up every day and say, God, heal me. I get up every day and thank God I'm healed. Amen. I don't have to come to church. I get to come to church. Yeah. I don't have to give. I get to give. Yeah. I don't have to pray. I get to pray. There's a difference. Yeah, that's right. I do what I do because I get to. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lord to God. So much more, Jesus has become a guarantee of a better covenant. They had a covenant of the old, but now Jesus has come. We have a better covenant of the new. Amen. I say we have a better covenant of the new. Let's look back here at the Hebrews chapter 6, and uh, let's look at verse, let me see here in my Amplified Bible. In Hebrews chapter 6, thank God for the Word. Amen. Do you love the Word? Amen. Word is good. It's, it's better than any kind of steak you can fix, any kind of CV you can fix. Amen. It says here in uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, in order that you may not grow disinterested and become spiritually sluggards, but imitators, having as, having as do those who through faith by their leaning of the entire personality on God in Christ. Now, God in Christ, the heavenly name, in absolute trust, and confidence in his power, his wisdom, and his goodness, and by practice of patience, endurance, and waiting are now inheriting the promises. Waiting to inherit the promises. When you read, go back through Hebrews, the 11th chapter, you'll find all the Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame people by faith, by faith, by faith. And they left out a lot of names. You go throughout the Word of God, you'll find everything is by faith. Abraham started the subject or the life of faith through Abraham. Now, those in the Hall of Faith, they were pressing forward. They never saw the victory, not in the natural, but they saw it in the spirit. They was headed towards it. Because why? How can you head towards something you've never seen? Because you've got a revelation of your contract with God. You've got a revelation of your contract with God. I've never seen heaven. I've never seen God. I've never seen Jesus. But I've heard his voice on the inside, a small, still voice on the inside. But I've never seen him. So how do you know you're going to heaven? Because I have a guarantee. I have a guarantee. The Word of God. Amen. I walk by faith Amen. and not by appearance. Amen. I don't have to see Him to believe it. Amen. I have His Word on it. Amen. The Bible teaches us His Word is more plain than seeing Him. Amen. Hello. Amen. Come on, stay with me now. He says, they're waiting and inheriting the promises. You will inherit the promises of God his contract is sealed and guaranteed you will receive the promise. What is the promise? Everything in this book. This is your contract. 
I said, this is your contract. When I was meditating on this, your, your contract is your bond. You find out, uh, you know, Africa and different countries of the world, they uh, practice blood covenant. Even though many heathens, they don't understand the power of the blood covenant in the supernatural, but they understand the power of the blood covenant in the natural. So what they would do, blood covenant, uh, in the villages to become blood, 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 blood brothers with the other village was to cut their skin, to cut their skin. That's why God told Abraham, cut your skin, make a covenant after eight days. When a child is eight days old, cut the skin. That's a proof of covenant, that that child is in the covenant of God. Amen? And we will find out also, I'm just giving you a little heads up here. We will find out also that God has circumcised our heart. When we got born again, he cut the heart spiritually that we have been in the, brought into the family of God. Once we have been brought into the family of God, we have a contract, a guarantee. I have a guarantee. Amen? And so when they would mingle their blood together, what that means was, you're my brother for life. Amen. You're my brother for life. In other words, he said, everything I have belongs to you, and everything you have belongs to me. Amen. And the Jewish nation got this understanding that when one, uh, say, a mother would die, a father would die, another Israelite would pick up and be the father or be the mother and take care of that child. Yes, right. Why? Because of the contract. Jesus has made a lifetime contract with us through his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. I said, I am excited. Yes. Let's, let's read down here a little bit more. Verse 13. For when God made his promise to Abraham... He swore by himself, since he can no longer, no one greater than him can swear. He's the greatest. When he says he swore by himself, means he cannot lie. It's impossible for God to tell a lie. Impossible for God to tell a lie. We should take that same understanding that we have a contract with God. It should get to a point that it will be impossible for us to tell a lie. And if we do tell a lie in the natural, repent. Get it back in the contract. Get back into the covenant with God through your mouth. Amen. Don't let your mouth take you out of the contract. Don't let your mouth take you out of the contract. Amen. My dad, when he was uh, back years ago, his young man had a big farm and he bought a lot of big equipment and so forth. And, and I remember as a young man myself and talking to him, he was telling me that he had bought this combine and uh, so-and-so amount of money and so forth. And, and he said, we just, we just shook on it. I, I, I talked to him. We, we came to an agreement with the price I was going to pay him. And he said, we just shook on it. And I asked him, then, I, said, he did, I said, Dad, he didn't sign no contract or nothing. He said, we don't have to do that. When we say it's a done deal, it's a done deal. You got people today that have to sign contracts. Sometimes it takes you longer to sign the contract for the contract to last. <laughs> you have so many contracts. You ever go buy a car? I said, I just wanted to buy one car. You ever buy a house, Jonathan? When you close your house, did you have to sign some papers? A lot of papers. A lot of papers. I remember I bought a car one time in Florida back in 1981. And uh, 1980, 1980, no, 2000, 2001. And uh, we bought a car, Pastor Charles bought him one a year later. I bought one. I remember being into the office there. And the guy, he, he, I went in the office, he had papers everywhere. 
I said, how do you find anything? He says, this is the only way I could find anything. <laughs> so when we were signing the paperwork, he just threw it over to the side. He kept throwing it over to the side. I said, you going to be able to find that? He said, I know exactly where it's at. <laughs> but the bottom line is, to get that car into my hands, I had to sign, I don't know how many pieces of paper. I can't even remember how many pieces of paper I had to sign. Same way with my house. But with God, the paperwork had been signed, sealed, and delivered 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. He didn't strike a deal with us. He made a deal. Amen. I said, he made a deal with us. Then strike a deal, made one. Guarantee. Do you understand a guarantee? Amen. Amen. Praise God. When you got a guarantee on something, when your car breaks down, you got a guarantee, just take it back in. You got to pay nothing. They just go ahead and fix it. Amen. I'm over here about three years ago. Uh, I bought a car and, and uh, it, it didn't have about 2,000 miles on it and something went out on it, a computer thing. I went back in. They said, uh, Mr. Privet, it's not going to cost you anything. You got a guarantee yes. Hallelujah. for five years. A guarantee of four or five years won't cost you anything. I like that. And one time I went up and get my oil changed. They checked the battery on it. And uh, they said, well, your, your battery uh, looks like it's going to be bad down the road. <laughs> he said, it may last a few more months. But while you got it in here, uh, you don't have to pay anything. We're just going to put you a new battery in. Glory to the God. I see. Make you want to speak in tongues, you know? A $150 battery. Amen. Think about this. God says, don't worry about it. You got a guarantee and your parts are free. Your parts are free. I got plenty of hearts, plenty of kidneys, plenty of livers. Plenty of eyes. I got plenty of everything. It's a guarantee. I got a contract with God. He swore by of himself. He could swear by no greater. Verse 14 says, saying, notice what it said, saying, blessing, I certainly will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. And so it was that Abraham, having waited long and endured patience, realize and obtain in the birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come, what God has promised him. He got a revelation to understand all that was coming. All that was coming. Remember the contract. I'll tell you what. I mean, let's go read the contract. Let's go over here to Genesis chapter 15. We'll probably go back and read it later, but let me let me read it now. Thank God for the word. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Uh, I may be back and forth, but but I'm just I'm just so excited about my contract. Jonathan, did you and Melanie get excited about that house? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got excited about the baby too, didn't you? <laughs> they got a new baby coming. Going to put the baby in a new house. Right. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. See, God's no respecter of persons. Amen. What he does for one, he'll do for another. Amen. I, I'm excited for him. Amen. Amen. We can run through a troop together. Amen. We can leap over walls together. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at this here. God had, let me set the scene. God, Abraham had talked to God. God had said, Abraham, you're going you're gonna to be the father of many nations. Abraham, you're going to have a son out of your own loins. And Abraham said, God, how is this going to happen? How is this going to work? So let's just begin to read here verse 1, Genesis chapter 15. 
After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram, that's where his name was changed, in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abram, I'm your shield. And the word shield here in the Hebrew means increase. God is our increase. He said, I am your increase, your exceedingly great reward. Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childish? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my, is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, this one shall not be your heir. This one will not inherit from you what I had planned for you. But one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Now, Abraham was a young 75-year-old here. I like to say young 75-year-old because I'm 75 myself. I'm a young 75 years old. Amen. Sometimes people say, well, how old are you? I say, I'll tell you how young I am. Amen. <laughs> They always tell you how young you are. And verse 5 says, Then he brought him outside and said, Look down towards the heavens, count the stars, see if you're able to number them. And he said to him, So your descendants will be as many or more than the stars. And he believed. Somebody say believe. believe. He believed. And the word believe here in the Hebrew, the word believe here in the Hebrew means not only a living, loving trust, but it also means give yourself holy with a W, holy up or to be a part of him or go right into him. Or unqualified committal. He says he believed without any questions. He believed he committed himself to his belief. See, here's the problem now. Listen very carefully. We say, I believe, but have you really committed to that word believe? I believe she's my wife, but have you really committed to her? I believe he's my husband, but have you really given yourself holy unto them? Amen. Holy with a W. Holy of oneself. You're all of you. All of you. And Abraham said, I believe. So Abraham was saying this, Father, I'm giving you all of me. Because I know that you've given you, me, all of you. Hallelujah. God, when he died on that cross, he rose from the dead. He gave all to us. He provided through the way of the Holy Spirit to come and dwell inside of us. Amen. To give him all of us. Now, Abraham was taught the word of God, taught faith by God himself. We are taught faith through the Word of God, which is God Himself. The same God that taught Abraham is teaching us Amen. through the Word of God. Same God. He hasn't changed. He said, I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same today. I'll be the same tomorrow. Don't, lock on, don't knock on God's door and say, God, where are you at? Because God's in you. And I believe and I'm giving myself all to him. All to him. Amen. He said, and he believed in the Lord. He counted it to himself for righteousness. Righteousness means what? Come on, talk to me. Right standing with God. I'm standing right with God. Because I've given myself wholly unto him. It's not just a word by saying I'm standing right with God. It means I've got a revelation of my standing with God. It means I'm standing in Him. And He's standing in me. <laughs> I'm standing in Him. He's standing in me. So when I see you, I see God. When you see me, you should see God in me. Standing inside of me. If I could just step out of my body right over here, just step out for a second, and my spirit could still stand there, you would see God Amen. with my spirit. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to shout. Nobody shouts this place. I'm going to shout. He's standing inside of me means this. He's standing with me in every right decision I make. Notice what I said. Every right biblical decision I make, he's standing with me. He cannot stand and confirm his word if it's not his word. Amen. Amen. Somebody says, stand with me, God. Stand with me in this situation. Do you really believe that? Do you really believe that? He says here, and believe. Then he said, verse 7, then he said to him, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I am El Sadai, who brought you out of the early Chaldees to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? How shall I know the promises will come? How shall I know? He's questioning God. After he done said, I'll commit myself to you. He committed himself to him. Then he said, how am I going to know? I believe it, but how can I know it? And God says this. He said, how can I know it? And verse 9 says, so he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, turtle dove, a young pigeon. Aren't you glad when you're praying to God, God don't say, go get me a goat. <laughs> go get me some turtle doves. Go get me some pigeons. <laughs> Why did he tell him that? Then he brought all of this to him and cut them in two down the middle. See, this is a covenant talk. Covenant talk. He's getting ready to seal his word with Abraham through animal sacrifices. Are you hearing me? But Abraham was still a man of faith, just like you and I. But he did not cut the birds in two. Why? And when the devil or vultures came down on the carcass, Abram drove them away. There's some things you've got to do when you're standing. The devil will come. And try to get you discouraged. You are responsible for driving the devil away from your life. Amen. You are responsible. I am responsible. He gives us the power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall hurt us by any means. Amen? Amen. And now he says here in verse 12, Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram, and behold, horror, great darkness fell on him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be as strangers in the land. Talking about Egypt. His descendants will go to Egypt in a strange land that they've never been before. They go to Egypt. And he says here, That it's not, there, it's not theirs or will serve them, and they will afflict them for 400 years. God prophesied, to Abraham and said the children of Israel will end up in Egypt and they will be there for 400 years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. Thank God there's some good news on the end of that. Amen. Now for you, you shall go to your father in peace. You shall be buried in a good old age. Old age is really good. So you should be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. For it shall come to pass, when the sun went down, it was dark, that behold, there appeared a smoking oven. Now, underline smoking oven, because that's God. That's God. And a burning torch, that's Jesus, or Christ, that passed through those pieces. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land for the river of Egypt to the river of Euphrates. 
God says, I made a promise to you. I'm giving you all these nations, all these people, all these nations, I'm giving them to you. Amen? Now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 7. God has made a promise to Abraham. The same promise he made to Abraham, he's made to you and I when we got born again. When we got born again, we call upon the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to forgive us of our sins, to save us. He came into us immediately. Now, let's look at chapter 7 of the book of Hebrews, and we'll look at verse 1. For this Melchizedek, the king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kid of the kings and blessed him. Notice verse 2 and 3. To whom also Abraham gave it. Now Abraham, his name has been changed. Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, then also king of Salem, meaning the king of peace. Now verse 3 is going to tell us what it is. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of the day or the end of days, but made like the Son of God. Who's the Son of God? He was made like the Son of God, which is like Jesus. Remains a priest for a certain amount of time. He made priest continually. Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is a high priest. Made Jesus high priest continually forever. Amen? I said continually forever. Verse 22 of chapter 7 says this. So much more when Jesus has become a guarantee of a better covenant. Also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. But he became, because he continues forever, he has also unchangeable priesthood. His priesthood can't change. Now listen to me. You have a high priest living inside of you. And the position of a high priest is seated at the right hand side of the Father. Once we have been born again, we are also, as Paul says, we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. We're also seated in the right-hand side of the Father. We have the Father, we have the Son, we have the Holy Ghost, and you and I Amen. are seated in the right-hand side of the Father. Now, notice all the miracles that Abraham did. They said that Abraham, he had his uh, soldiers each soldier, one soldier could slay 800 people or 800 so other soldiers. Can you imagine having the ability as one man to slay 800 by yourself? Amen? That's because God is God. That's because God is God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have that better covenant now. Better promises. When God says something, he will not break his word. I said, God will not break his word. Amen. He says here again, in verse 3 of chapter 7, he was without father, without mother. He has no beginning and he has no end. That's why God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all one. Yet they're separated. Jesus came in his humanity. He came in his humanity. He could not do what he did if he came as God. Because God was divinity. Jesus had to become on the earth born of a woman in his humanity, in his deity. So he lived in his deity, in his, I mean, in his humanity, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When he walked through the Gospels, he walked as a man. He walked as a man. Then he turns and tells us, 
you'll do even greater word, works than I did in your humanity, not in your deity. But you have deity back, backing up humanity. Guarantee. A guarantee. Sometimes if you go to buy something, say a car or house, you may not, you might have, you might have messed up your credit in the early years. I did when I was a young boy, 17, I messed up my credit. It took me several years to get it back straightened out. But in those days when my credit was messed up, I had to have what we call a cosigner. A cosigner, the sign. What's a cosigner? The guarantee your payment if you miss your payment. If you buy something, you have a cosigner. They, will, they are assigned to pay what you fail to pay. We have, <laughs> we have a co-signer. When you fail, he'll pick up the slack and take care of it for you. We have a co-signer. Jesus signed the contract with Abraham. So Abraham, don't fret over it. Don't worry about it. Don't be concerned about it. I told you you're going to have a child through your wife, Sarah, which was Sarah, now Sarah. Now notice when he came out, just to give you a little preview, when he came out in Genesis, the 15th chapter, immediately the next chapter talks about Hagar. Sarah asked Abraham a stupid question. Would you go into my servant and impregnate her? Abraham said, no, I just don't have time to mess with her. No, he didn't, he didn't say that. He, pol he politely agreed with his wife. He knew that was an important thing to agree with his wife. After, after God talked to Sarah and talked to Abraham and told him they were going to have a child. That's right. But time was slipping, seemed like they thought slipping away. Yeah. Now, God replaced his manhood at 75. Because if he didn't have his manhood replaced, he couldn't have a child. But he had a child through Hagar. Amen. And see, Sarah didn't have a problem having a baby. It was just wasn't time. Timing means everything with God. When the time is right, heaven and earth has to step aside because God has a perfect time for you to walk into all that he's promised you. Your promises or on the way right now. It's coming. The time, I don't know, but I will say out of my mouth, the time starts right now. I set my spiritual clock right now. The time is now. They try to get ahead of God. Did that hurt him? Yes. 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 He probably delayed the process some. But when Abraham got down the road, a few years down the road, he looked over there to say her, he noticed a bump on her belly. <laughs> he didn't see a pregnant woman. He saw the promise. Whoa, glory to God. Somebody stand up and shout with me. I have to stop right there. He saw the promise of God. Just like Elijah sent his servant Ahab. Go see if it's going to rain. He'll preach on that. See, I've been watching all the services. 
Go see if it's raining. He came back to Elijah and said, no, it's not raining. Elijah said, go again. He came back. It still ain't raining. Go again. I don't see anything. It still ain't raining. But I got some news for you. You may not see anything, but you get up every day and you see, look off. And you look. And get up next day if you don't see nothing and look again. With expectation, you're going to see it. By faith, you see it. And then after the seventh time, he said, came back to the prophet, said, Elijah, I see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. And I said, get ready. It's about to rain. It's about to rain. The rain is the blessings of God. It's about to rain your blessings on your life. You don't have to see nothing but a little bump, a little cloud, a little spark, a little increase. Sometimes you say, well, I got a, a pay raise, but it won't much. Don't ever say it won't much. You ought to be able to say, that's the beginning of great things that take place. That's the beginning of great things that take place. You may be under physical attack, and you get it one day, and you're feeling a little bit better, but you don't feel like you have felt. You ought to say, my God, it's getting better. Amen. It's getting better. Amen. It's getting better. Amen. Every day I get up, it's getting better. Amen. I said, it's getting better every day. Amen. Look at his neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor, it's getting better. It's getting better. Every day. Every day. I said every day. Every day. Not once in a while. Every day. But every day. Every day. See what God did for you? Yes, he did. And Gail? Yes, he did. Every day. Every day. Every day. That wasn't just a one time thing. No. That was the beginning of blessings. The beginning of blessings on your life. But you cannot be grumbling and griping and criticizing and blaspheming and cursing and chewing and spitting and dipping. <laughs> Keep your mouth right for your blessings. That good things come out of your mouth every day. See, I see the goodness of God working in my life. He's a good God. Amen. If you saved and know you're born again, raise your hand right now. If you really saved, if your heart will stop beating right now, you go to heaven. All right, take your hand down. If you could not, raise your hand. God did so much for you. He gave his only begotten son that you may have eternal life. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. You may never have another chance. This is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may never come. So if you're not sure about your salvation, or if you want to get born again, raise your hand right now. Just raise it up. Not to embarrass anyone. Just raise it up. Salvation is a great thing to be a part of. Being in the family of God the greatest thing you could ever be a, a part of, being born again. I've been in this over 50 years, and I love it more today than I ever have. He gets good all the time. Amen? If you're not a member of the church and you'd like to join this church, we've got membership coming up at the end of the month. So if you had not come up yet or fill out a card to be a member, would you like to invite you to come down and join this church this morning? This church has a good pastor. Amen. Good pastor. Everybody needs a good pastor. A, co a covering. 
over you, that cares about you, and to pray with you. If you're not a member, I ask you to come down right now. Come down right now. Play, play a little bit, and we'll wait for you. Play a little bit, and we'll wait for you. Somebody's coming. Go ahead, sing something. Play something. come up, want to be a member of the church? Salvation. Oh, salvation. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Praise yeah. God. What's your name, young lady? Brandy? Brandy. Praise God. Hallelujah. Got a Brandy right over here. Yeah. Listen, the Bible says that for whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not a maybe, not a possibility, not a hope so, but shall be saved. You don't have to feel nothing. I know you're feeling right now something special in your life. You're feeling a release of the heaviness that you've been carrying. And God won't let you know this. He told me to tell you, He loves you. You have never been forgotten. He's just been waiting for you to give your life to him. He'll protect you. He'll be there with you in the midnight hour. And all darkness seems to be coming around you. Just remember, Jesus loves you. Pray this prayer with me. Everybody, everybody in the church, pray this prayer with me out loud. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe today, I believe today that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ died, for me died for me 2,000 years ago. 2000 years ago. And, on and on the third day, he arose from the grave. From the grave. I, believe I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. I, with my mouth. I am saved, I am saved and, delivered and delivered by the blood of the Lamb. I am, I am blessed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Can you just stay there just for a second? You know, I really believe in my heart. I want y'all to get ready to sing again because I believe there's people here this morning. You're not here by accident. You're here because the Holy Spirit made a way for you to be here this morning. And we're going to sing that song one more time. If you need Jesus in your life, he can help you. He can heal you. He can give you joy. No matter what you've been through in your life or what you're going through now, God can help you. So sing that again right now. And we're going to give you another opportunity. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Holy Spirit, have your way this morning. Minister to the hearts of the people. Come on. We're waiting. Jesus is waiting on you this morning. Hallelujah. You know, the enemy don't want you to come. He'll put fear in your heart. He'll tell you you're not worthy. That's a lie. This is for you right now. Come on. Come as you are. You don't have to change a thing. God will help you through all that. Hallelujah. We're waiting on you this morning. Praise God. Bring it all to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name, sweetheart? Michaela. 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 
the Holy Spirit. What you feeling right now is that pull of the Holy Spirit drawing you into God this today. Jesus loves you so much. No matter what you've been through in life, no matter what you've been told, no matter what you've done, it's all covered under the blood. You coming forth and giving your heart to God. He's, going, he's forgiven you. You have a brand new life ahead of you. You're a new creation. Old things are passed away. And all things from this point on become new. You're a new creation, a new person right now. Hallelujah. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now look, you're a baby. It's just like a baby when it's born. It can't feed itself. It can't walk, can't talk. That's why you need the word. That's why you need to get involved in church because it'll help you to grow and mature. It'll change your life. I promise you, it will change your life. I went, I went through a lot of things when I was a young girl, a lot of things. But I don't, I, it's all in the past. It's under the blood. God is no respecter of person. Thank you for giving your heart to God today. God bless you, Michaela. This is brother. This is a sister Barbara McCall. She's gonna take you with you. Okay, pray with you. Go. With, you go with her. Praise God. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Yes. Ask God to lead you to somebody that needs Christ this week. Amen. Lord, just put it on my heart to talk to somebody about Jesus. Amen. Amen. The greatest feeling in the world is when you win somebody to Jesus. Amen. Amen.